The Golden State Warriors post Kevin Durant have been one of the most interesting teams in the league over the past few years. Due to injury, they have really stumbled their way through these last two seasons. However, with Klay Thompson coming back at some point in the coming season, it seems as though the band is finally coming back together, along with some new pieces on the roster. But the question with this team is, is the old band still good enough? Can the Warriors go back to the way that it was pre-Kevin Durant winning 67 and 73 games or at least something in a similar vein? Or is the magic gone either from changes within the team or the league around them? Let's talk about it. Before I continue on with this video, about half of the people who watch these videos are not subscribed, so if you fall out of the 50%, then please subscribe. Also drop a like on this video, it only takes one second and makes a massive difference. I'm trying to hit 200k subscribers on this channel by the end of the year, so your subscription would be much appreciated. Let's quickly go over Golden State's depth chart. We obviously have the Splash Brothers as the starting guards, Wiggins at the three, Draymond at the four, and then I presume Wiseman at the five, though I'm confident he will not be in their closing lineups, likely opting for Draymond as the five. The bench will be Jordan Poole, Otto Porter Jr., Moses Moody, Jonathan Kaminga, Andre Iguodala, and Kevon Looney. So looking at that, the first thing that I'd like to make note of is, damn, that's actually a really good bench unit. I think both of their rookies can have somewhat of an immediate impact for this team, although they might not be on this team by the end of the year, and believe me, I'll talk about that. But Jordan Poole is one of the most underrated players in the league who became a pivotal piece for the Warriors last year. After coming back from injury last year in the second half of the season, Poole averaged 15 points on solid efficiency in just 23 minutes of action a game. So with starters minutes per 36, that would be about 22 and a half points per game. He's a hell of a scorer with a healthy mix of on and off ball ability, and I think he could be in contention for six man of the year next season. Otto Porter Jr. is one of the better 3 and D players in the league when he's healthy. The problem is he hasn't been healthy since the Bulls traded for him in 2019. When he's healthy, he can be an elite three point shooter, solid defender, and a capable shot creator. Iggy being back is obviously heartwarming, though he's not a particularly great player anymore, but I do think he can have a solid contribution, he obviously will fit right in with the culture, and Kevon Looney is a pretty solid backup 5. One of the biggest components in the Warriors' success pre-Kevin Durant joining the team was having a lot of depth, and I think this team has that. Another aspect of their success was defense. Can this roster replicate that? The Warriors were first and fifth in defense in 2015 and 2016, and in 2021, they were fifth again. And with the addition of Otto Porter, who's a solid defender, Iggy, who's good, obviously, hopefully a bit of development from Wiseman and, of course, Clay Thompson returning, I see no reason why they can't continue to be a top five defense in the NBA as they were last year. So two of the biggest factors in the Warriors being as good as they were pre-Kevin Durant are going to be just as good, I think, this year with their depth and their defense. So that's good. The next factor would be offense, which the Warriors weren't even remotely similar to last Last year versus the pre-Durant Warriors. The Dubs were number one in offense in 2015 and 2016, which should come at no surprise, but they were 20th last season, and them not being the worst offense in the game was pretty much solely because of Steph Curry, like literally just him. The Warriors had a 115.2 offensive rating with Steph on the floor, which would be 10th best in the NBA. The Warriors with Steph off of the floor had an offensive rating of 104.9, which would be the second worst offense in the league just above the OKC Thunder. So the question is, is Steph finally going to get some offensive help this season? Well, this is where Klay Thompson comes into play. We haven't seen Klay Thompson play NBA basketball since the 2019 finals, and based on how COVID has warped my perception and many other people's perceptions of time, 2019 might as well have been a decade ago. As a result of this, I feel like a lot of people have forgotten just how valuable and downright awesome Clay Thompson is. Clay is a really good defender, as previously mentioned, and he's also, in my opinion, the second best shooter in the history of the game. And having his level of shooting on the floor at the same time as Steph's is what truly made the Warriors unfair in years past. It is really, 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 really fucking hard to guard a pass and motion heavy offense 
where there are two players that literally cannot get a second of daylight. So even if Clay can't create a ton off the dribble, even if he isn't putting up 30 a night, his impact just based on your inability to give him a lick of space goes far beyond his 20 points a game. Similar to how Steph's offensive impact is much more significant just by how much of a threat he is, Clay can impact an offensive possession without even touching the ball. However, all of that said, I don't think that Clay alone is enough to transfer the Warriors from one of the worst offenses in the league to number one. I'm sure they can crack into the top 10, but making that big of a leap is a little bit of a stretch. I will say Clay being there will make it less likely that Steph sees triple team, so that will definitely make life easier for him and that will impact the offense. But overall, I don't think that alone will get them that high. The dubs need a little bit more than Clay Thompson. And to get a little bit negative, again, looking back at the pre-KD Warriors, the third and often second most important player in the Warriors offense, yes, the offense, was Draymond Green. In the 2016 season, Draymond took a huge leap from the previous year. He increased his scoring average to 14 points per game, averaged nearly 10 rebounds, and doubled his assist average to seven per game, and he shot 39 percent from three on three attempts per game and held up that shooting in the playoffs on even more attempts a game. Draymond's role as a playmaker was such a pivotal part of the Warriors offense pre-Kevin Durant and still a big part of it after, but I feel like it's often underrated in terms of talking about the Warriors success on offense because obviously a lot of the praise goes to the Splash Brothers, naturally. But part of the reason Draymond was so effective as a playmaker and he has been less effective as late is because his scoring was actually a legitimate threat. Because teams had to respect him, Draymond was able to make plays effortlessly. Draymond today is a god-awful three-point shooter. His scoring average has been cut in half. He infamously missed this layup, and he just isn't a threat whatsoever to opposing defenses. Now, to go back to the positive, I think there is a world where Kuminga and Moody are good off of the bench. Jordan Poole, I think, will make a jump next season. If Wiggins is as good as he was last season, he's much more of a threat than Harrison Barnes was. So I I think all of this can be a pretty damn good offense, even if Draymond is much more limited than he used to be. I think the Warriors can be top 10 in offense and top five in defense, and that's certainly approaching contender level. However, at the same time, I will not confidently say that this team is a completely legitimate 100% contender. But if you trade James Wiseman, Moses Moody, and Jonathan Kaminga in a package for a star level player like let's say Bradley Beal or maybe Carl Anthony Towns with another down year in Minnesota, or really just somebody because there's always someone becoming available in the NBA these days, if they could make a deal like that, they're 100% a contender. I'm personally not a huge fan of Wiseman, and I don't really believe in his potential like many people do, though I could very easily be wrong about that. Kuminga is a bit raw offensively, and I don't know for sure how he fits in with the Dubs. And Moody, I think, can definitely be good pretty much immediately because he's a really good spot shooter, but he might be a tad redundant with this team's wing depth. Ultimately though, while I do believe there is some impact that these three can have, it pales in comparison to the impact another star player would have on this team. So I'm hoping Bob Myers can get the job done because with this guy being one of my favorite players of all time, I would very much like to see the dubs get back into contention and see Steph win another ring before his career is over. So are the Warriors contenders again as they stand right now? Kind of, sure. Would they be if they cashed in their assets for a star level player without an ounce of hesitation? So hopefully they can do that. But shout out to Rudy for editing this video. That is the end of this video. Please be sure to like and subscribe for my NBA content like this and cue the outro music.